Hello, I'm Andy, N0APX, and this is another World Radio League feature highlight. In today's feature highlight, we're going to go over many of the features we've released so far in December. Super excited about all the suggestions we've been getting from the community, and we're glad to be able to deliver on so many in such a short amount of time. First of all, let's take a look at light mode. You'll notice this new button in the header of your web app. If you click this button, it immediately turns on light mode. We've been designing this beautiful new theme for quite some time now, and we're really happy with how it turned out. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As you can see, not only are all the backgrounds and logging screens in light mode, but so are the maps as well. And speaking of maps, this brings up another great new feature we've designed. Now within any logbook, you can click this share map button and it generates this beautiful new UI showing all of your contacts in that logbook along with details about the logbook. As you can see here, this is my ARRL 10 meter contest log. I logged 62 QSOs over a period of one and a third days. That figures out to a rate of 1.94 QSOs per hour. My top band was 10 meters and my top mode was single sideband. I only operated on 10 meters single sideband. But if I had operated multiple bands or modes, my top band and mode would be listed here. It also shows all the DX entities that I have logged in this logbook. As you can see, the United States, Canada, I got Alaska, and Hawaii. You can tell what the country is by hovering over the flag and looking at the tooltip. It listed my radio here, the TS-570D, and this is a key to show you what each of the symbols on the map mean. In this case, I only operated in one mode, but if I had operated in multiple modes, there would be multiple shapes down here in the key. Now I can hover over each of these to learn more about the contact, but when I'm ready to share the map, I can either copy the link or download the image and share that screenshot with anyone. Now you may have noticed from this page that our logging screen looks a little bit different. Let's dive into that. We've now changed our logging page to a split screen view. So you have your logging interface on the left, and all your details on the right. We have it split into three tabs, so you can view your logbook entries, you can look at your logbook map, or you can open the spotting page. Now we've added the spotting map view into the logging page so that it's easier to access. We still have the table view and the grid view as well. Now a fantastic new feature we've added is the spotting pop-out view. So if you have multiple screens, you can just click this button and it opens up a brand new pop-up window. You can put that on another screen and switch this tab back and change this view back to the map or the entries view. And as you can see, I still have my spotting information in its own window. Now a quick look at our new spotting system. We've cleaned up our filters a lot, so they look quite a bit cleaner. You can access a few extra filters here under this more filters button. Now we had to condense the list view in order to show all the information in a clean and crisp way but you can still look at the comments by hovering over this comment icon right here. We've also changed the way we alert you when you copy a spot to your logbook. We had an old annoying toaster message pop up at the top, but we've completely replaced that with just a simple yellow flash when you copy the spot to your logging page. Now another new feature that so many of you have asked for is Soda or Summits on the Air and WWFF or Worldwide Flora and Fauna. Well now we've got it. If you click on the Activities tab, on the left, you can see now we have this brand new map with all the SOTA, POTA, WWFF, and Islands on the Air locations listed. And it's super simple to start a logbook. Let me find a POTA location near me. I'll click on the icon, click Create Logbook, and it automatically creates a new logbook at that location. Now, if I want to create a new logbook with multiple activities, that's really simple too. I can click Create New Logbook, then click New Logbook, then I can add the activities I would like. I'll add POTA first, then I'll add WWFF, and then I'll add a SOTA Summit as well. Now obviously all three of these locations are not the same, but I'm only using this for demonstration purposes. Now since I selected my POTA Park first, that is set as the default location for the logbook. Now I'll click Save, and as you can see, it says the Poda Park is my primary activity, but if you click on this quick action button, you can see all of the activities listed. Now if I go to export this ADIF, I can export the Poda ADIF, 
the WWF F ADIF or the SODA ADIF. And of course, I can still export a generalized ADIF as well. Now, one of the more subtle but still exciting features that we've added is the expanded profile. So if I click my edit profile, scroll down here to short bio, that's still the information that's going to appear next to your profile picture on your profile page. But if I scroll down here to long bio, I now have the ability to add rich text, iframes, photos, videos, and much more. Now these are just a few of the great features and enhancements that we've added recently. We've been getting a lot of requests for a lot of great features, and we're working really hard to deliver on some of the most exciting ones. We hope you enjoyed this feature highlight, and if you have any questions or suggestions for any future feature highlights, be sure and drop those down in the comments below, or send us a message at community.worldradioleague.com. You can tag me at N0APX. I'm Andy, Merry Christmas, and 7-3.